Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. Mind the, uh, you know, sort of mess, lack of things back here. I'm moving my studio right now, but I thought I would take uh, the time to uh, hold and talk about an industry plant. Industry plants, oh my God. This is not often a topic that I get into on my videos because I find a lot of the dialogue around industry plants to be sort of stupid, not all that nuanced. See my Billie Eilish is an industry plant video for more context on that. But there is a specific instance of this happening on TikTok. I have been using TikTok quite a bit lately to make some content do some memes, spread the brand. And at this point, I'm pretty deeply dug into music talk, producer talk, bass talk, indie talk. For as much as the app gets hated on and reduced down to one single thing, there's actually a really robust series of sub-communities oriented around music there that are pretty cool. Now, whether you're on TikTok or not, there is one thing that is very clearly true about the app, and that's music is incredibly popular there. So popular that when something musically pops off on the app, you often see it gaining virality on other platforms too. The app actually claims over the past year, 70 artists whose music broke on the app got signed to majors. So it's no secret at this point that when labels and artists be they independent or mainstream, look at TikTok, they see opportunity. Sometimes they see money. Over the past few years, there have very clearly been artists who have tried to come out with tracks that are almost geared toward the platform, 2C Slide, for example. Many more obscure artists and creators are trying to climb the TikTok ladder too in their own way, but none seem to have gained the sort of backlash that this band here has Tramp Stamps. They are a pop and punk trio with a few singles under their belt that have been trying to break into the mainstream, mostly using TikTok by posting to it religiously since about last year. And flipping through my For You page, I actually came across one of their videos, but uh, because there wasn't really anything gripping about it and the song was kind of bad, I just kind of kept going. And usually on TikTok, when I just flip past something, I don't comment, I don't like, I don't interact with it, rarely will I ever see it again. But later in the day, I kept seeing their stuff. Not only that, but every other couple of videos, I'd see somebody talking about their stuff. The entire rock, punk, and DIY side of the app were just convening on their profile all at once. And pretty much all these videos were making the bold claim that tramp stamps are essentially industry plants, just nefariously placed here on TikTok in order to trick kids into listening to them. And uh, looking a little bit into uh, their group, I can kind of see why some would walk away with that conclusion. Let's read the tramp stamp bio for context, shall we? Whip smart and wildly irreverent Nashville based band Tramp Stamps are introducing a fantastically unfiltered new voice into today's pop landscape. With a lyrical style that's equal part social commentary, soul bearing confession, and brilliantly profane storytelling, singer Marissa Mano, guitarist Caroline Baker, and drummer Paige Blues speak the truth on societal ills like white boy privilege and fragile masculinity. All while revealing their warped sense of humor and untamed joy de vivre. And with its high energy collision of pop and skate punk, Tramp Stamp sound fully reflects the raw catharsis that fuels their songwriting. All our songs start with us going on rants about stuff that pisses us off. Shit we wish were different. Stories that have happened to us involving fucked up guys, says Mano. Adds Baker, it's the kind of stuff women talk about all the time with their friends, but no one's ever put it ever put it to this kind of music before. Already this reads fake as hell. Uh, there's no way any DIY or totally independent band is coming at you with a block of PR written text this dense. But what reads is even more inauthentic than this PR drivel right here are the videos that they actually upload to their page when you get a greater sense of them. Slavers. Already have matching tattoos. <laughs> uh, where are those left? Yeah. 
Oh, I hope those tattoos don't end up being a regret. There's also this clip I found to be a little curious. <laughs> New Music Friday on Spotify. Like, how is this seemingly independent band just doing it totally on their own, uh, getting on New Music Friday after just like putting out a few singles? In one breath, they're sort of portraying what they do as being very punk and very organic, but simultaneously it just reeks as being very industry. In my face, you can fuck yourself, you can fuck yourself. If you walk my way, you can fuck yourself, you can fuck yourself. Girls don't like boys, girls like cars in my name. Like, if you're going to try this hard and flaunt this level of time and budget in your social media, your promo rollouts, your music videos, it at the very least should be good. That's kind of the biggest issue with Tramp Stamps. Their music isn't particularly good. Their production is clean, but the songs are absolutely generic. Their use of autotune is tacky, and God, the lead vocals are awful. They just put on this over-exaggerated modern pop-punk affectation that push to the point of parody. Uh, I need all my vows to be over exaggerated. And look, this is even before we get into the content of the songs that they're putting out there. Like the writing on these tracks reads as a desperate attempt to appeal to young blood and Lil Peep teens and tweens, while also lacing their tracks with these sexually unsatisfied diatribes that feel like a lesser version of what you would get on an Ash Nico song. Like the white privilege and the matriarchy the band sings about doesn't really run much deeper than boys suck, sex with boys is bad, I'll never sleep with a straight white guy again. As TikTokers and Zoomers got exposed to Tramp Stamps content, they started doing doing some digging and found some industry connections. For example, singer Marissa Mano has been making pop songs up until just like really, really recently. Her chameleon shift into this punk aesthetic uh, looks to be very, very recent and is also evidenced in this totally embarrassing footage that, again, the band voluntarily uploaded to the internet. You're doing some clip testing your emo and your punk cred and MCR comes on and your brain starts buffering. Like, I'm not trying to be a gatekeeper here or force people to listen to bands they don't want to listen to or even challenge young music fans. Because look, if you just heard the Black Parade the other day and you tell me, eh, this is my life now, I'm emo, uh, that's cool, live your life. But when you're a band trying to ride a cultural wave for clout and potentially money, don't be surprised when the fans of the culture you're trying to ingrain yourselves in cry foul when they find out that the roots don't run that deep. So it's been dug up. The guitarist is a part of a publishing company affiliated with Dr. Luke. Yes, that Dr. Luke, Kesha Dr. Luke. And the drummer Paige Blue is actually affiliated with one of the bigger names in the publishing biz, Downtown Music. It's actually great and a cool thing that the members of this trio have been making music for a while, regardless of what style of music that is. Like if Caroline and Paige are mega talented enough to the point where publishing and production companies want to work with them on uh, mixes and songs and advertising campaigns, you know, that's uh, ultimately a good thing. There's often not a lot of women in those roles in the music industry. And don't get it twisted. Music is an industry that needs lots of behind the scenes movers and shakers to make your favorite records and album cycles come to life. So it's not even inherently a bad thing that they have industry connections or that they decided to create an image for their band. Popular music is full of stories just like theirs. I mean, for example, have you ever heard the song, uh, 
I Want Candy by The Strange Loves. Most likely you've heard the track because it's been covered by so many artists over the years, but originally it's by a group named The Strange Loves, who began as a trio of industry songwriting and production grunts, but the thing is that there's nothing sexy about <laughs> that backstory. So in order to make themselves marketable, apparently the trio came up with this story that they're from Australia, which like for the 1960s uh, in America is really exotic, which is why they'd all be wearing like these flamboyant shirts. And on top of it, which is why that track I Want Candy starts off with these noticeably like tribal drums that have carried over into much of the covers of the track too. Even at the roots of the punk scene, there have been documented in instances of artists being really performative with how they presented themselves to that fan base. Take this quote from writer Christopher Gable, noting that the police, when they broke onto the scene, uh, were very much dressing themselves and presenting themselves with a punk aesthetic, but not really living up to those ideals and not really, you know, kind of being ingrained in the scene like that, according to people who were a part of that community. This is all to say, when it comes to the most popular music and most beloved music out there, a lot of the time there is a level of image being presented to you. There is a level of marketing happening. If you're under the impression that all the music you love arrived to you with 100% authenticity and 100% organically, you, you're, you're severely mistaken, especially in the age of algorithms. So I do see why people are calling out the band, but is the fact that they're presenting an image inherently bad? No. Is the fact that they have some industry connections inherently bad? No. I would even say if they are industry plants, taking it as the literal, the most literal and clear definition of that, like geez, um, look at the ongoing success of Lana Del Rey, who came into the industry as one of the biggest plants that we've seen rise to star status because she was on a label that people didn't know about at first and hit us with that grainy DIY bedroom webcam aesthetic on the music video for video games, making it look like, oh, this is so, this is so just like, it's so independent. Uh, meanwhile, the song itself is produced up the wazoo with luscious string sections that you'd only get like out of a studio. Where Tramp Stamp has screwed up here is not in the fact that they're marketing, it's that it's really bad marketing. It's not creative, it's not bold, it's not engaging. It's just desperate pandering toward teenagers that they don't think will know any better. And they think maybe we'll have their minds blown by all of the edgy swearing and try hard misandry as well as uh, uh, make tampons free. Ah! On top of that, Tramp Stamps has chosen to involve themselves in a community <laughs> that really cares about authenticity and really cares about its history. Like if Tramp Stamp broke onto the scene as, I don't know, a disco trio, I don't think they would be having uh, quite as many problems. On top of that, there is some stuff about their material and their promotions that seem a little problematic as well. Take the lyrics to I'd Rather Die. Um, here, these bars about uh, not being able to get it up and uh, so on and so forth. It, it kind of reads as sex shaming and sexual coercion, sort of going beyond just painting a picture of male toxicity. Plus also look at this very cringy attempt at being funny with this group DM clip. What are these statements? Are, are humans actually writing these? But like, no, it's not just all the other boys and bands and then there's tramp stamps. Oh my God, it's just a them and the boys. There's an excellent video by a TikToker I'd like to show you that highlights it's exactly that. So recently I've been seeing a lot of hate on this app directed at a certain pop punk trio who came out with a <clears throat> song earlier this week and uh, I just gotta say it's not your guys' fault. You know it's not like there's a whole lot of all-female pop punk trios who may have been doing this longer and maybe even much better before them. I mean we really just didn't have a whole lot to choose from. Really where else were we supposed to find any female pop punk trios to resonate with? So look in conclusion with this video I have uh, said a lot. And look, the point of this video is not to flame tramp stamps or shame tramp stamps or even bully them into never making music again. Don't just treat music like it's a marketing scheme or something. I know if you've been in the industry for a long time, it can be easy to feel sort of cynical and look at it that way. But still, as a creative, you should not allow it to bring you down to this level. Finally, the last thing I want to say in this video is congratulations to the Zoomers and TikTokers who saw this and kind of called it out for the BS that it is, because I know, I know in my heart where this band to have broken in like, 
I don't know, 2014, 2015, like younger millennials would just be lapping it up and you'd be reading one listicle after another. Here's 14 times that uh, tramp stamps were total girl bosses. For as negative as people are toward uh, the teenagers and kids on the TikTok app and, uh, and, and just Zoomers in general, like they, they, they have uh, BS detectors. And I don't know, I think we can uh, leave it there. But um, thank you for watching this video. It's been uh, quite a journey and uh, you're the best. Over here next to my head is another one that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Tramp Stamps forever.